Hey, what's going on guys? Uh, today I'm going to show you what I think is the easiest method for getting audio from your DAW into OBS. Uh, this doesn't involve the Windows sound control panel. It doesn't involve audio cable, virtual audio cables, none of that. Uh, this is like the most straightforward thing I could think of. So I'm going to show you how this goes. Uh, you're going to need Audacity or uh, some form of a... Uh, a silent audio file. So we're going to create an audio file here in Audacity, and uh, this will make sense in a minute. So you just hit generate, go to silence, and make like a one minute, 10 minute, whatever audio file. Just hit OK. So here we've got our silence, and now I'm going to export this as a WAV file. Um, I would save this in your Windows libraries. The reason to do this is because that way you can kind of just set it there and forget it and just like, you know, forget it's even there. Just save it in your documents folder and your music library folder, whatever, one of these C drive, you know, Windows preset, you know, folders. So I would name it something that's obvious to you so that you know that you won't delete it. So like, you know, do not delete OBS or 10 minutes of silence or something along those lines. So once you've created the file, it'll be in that folder and you can close Audacity. Um, from there, you go into OBS and we're going to right click inside sources, go to add, and then you're going to select a media source. So we'll select this and we're going to name it. Uh, I've already got it on my screen here. So I'll just DAW2. Sure. All right. So now you get this pop up and you want to browse to that folder. So like you're, if you're at my PC, you would just see music or documents or wherever you saved it. I saved it under music. So you double click here and here is your audio file. So we can just add it here. And so now that's added, I would select loop and I would uncheck restart playback and then just hit OK. And so now you have this media source that's in here that's basically a silent audio file, does nothing. But the reason this is here now is that we can add a Reaper uh, Rea Plugs plugin that's going to be used to transfer data from the DAW into OBS. So this is going to be the Rea Stream standalone plugin. Uh, you're going to see it in the uh, Rea plugs. Uh, if you just copy or if you just Google, you know, Reaper plugins, you'll find the uh, the, you know, the Kako's web page where you can download the uh, plugins. What you want to grab, the only one you really need is reastream standaloneDLL and the important thing here you want for OBS, as far as OBS is concerned, this plugin needs to exist in one of these folders. So depending on how you do your uh, plugins, you might have your plugins, you know, loaded in totally different folders, different hard drive or something. Uh, that's fine for your DAW. So it has to exist in a place where your DAW can find it and then make another copy of it and put this other copy of Restream standalone DLL, uh, put this in one of these folders here because otherwise OBS isn't going to see it. Um, so once you've got it there, then you're going to have to restart OBS in order for it to be able to then find uh, the plugin. So remember, you have to restart OBS after you install uh, Reastream standalone you know, plugin. So anyway, we'll go into our media source and click filters. And then in here, we're going to hit plus and the VST2 plugin. And you can name this whatever you want. I'm just going to put a little gibberish there. And then you go into select your plugin, you should see it in this list. Now, if you're like me and you have your plugins in one of those folders that I was just showing you in that list, you're gonna have just like a gigantic list of plugins and it's kind of frustrating and difficult to find, especially the fact that you go to the R's and you can't find Reastream, it's not here. So the reason why is because OBS, for whatever reason, they do capital letters and then they do lowercase letters. So we'll get down to the Z's here and you'll notice uh, it'll go to lowercase letters now. So keep going. You're looking for lowercase r and we're looking for Reastream dash standalone. So you just click on that and hit add. Um, if I do that for a second channel here, it's going to screw up my video. So I'll just show you on my original. Uh, so basically here, 
I'm going to filters and I've got Reastream saved and it's loaded with Reastream uh, standalone. So this is already loaded and it's here and you can leave it at the default setting. Like however it's opening up in here, this is exactly what you want. Like by default, this plugin is gonna show, open up as a receive audio and leave the identifier as default, leave it enabled. Basically what I'm saying is after you add it, you're good here. You're just, you're done here. So the next step is to do this in your DAW. So you'll have your DAW open and you have to add Reastream standalone to your DAW as well. The place to do that is on the master channel. Uh, this is where I like to do it. Um, you just click on effects and I've already got it added and I've got it set, but I'm going to show you how to uh, kind of walk through how to set this up. But essentially you just click on, you change this from receive to send and then in send, you want to hit the drop down here and select local broadcast. And if you didn't touch anything else, you're good to go. Uh, but let me just show you how to add the plugin in case you don't know. Um, you click add at the bottom there and then just type in Rea stream. And so this is enough. R-E-A-S was enough for it to find it. The one that you want to add is going to say Rea plugs edition. So this is the one that you want to hit add. And that's what I have here. That's, that's what this is. Okay. So this is on my master channel, meaning this is now going to listen to everything that comes through. So like my voice here is in uh, channel one. You know, I've just got this set for like my microphone. But something that I want to show you is that uh, if I move my master fader here, you know, I've got this set down to zero. So like Reaper isn't making any noise coming through, you know, like my speakers or my headphones, but it's still going through, uh, you know, the Reastream plugin and it's going into OBS at full volume here. So you have to remember that your master fader does nothing to the OBS audio. So what I would suggest is that you have like a parent channel as like your number one channel. And then from there, you add all of your uh, your children, like the all the stuff that you want to play through, you know, your system, like your, your drums, guitars, whatever it is that you want to play, have all that stuff in as a child or it, within the folder here. So this way, if you wanted to control a master fader, it would be this channel here. So like you can see, I'm moving this up and down and it's making my voice change volume. So that's the point in doing it that way. All right. So that is the basics of it. If you have any questions, let me know. I think this is the best way to do it because like I said, you don't have to worry about virtual audio cables or changing things in your Windows audio settings at all. Like this is it. This is bare bones. You're only doing, you know, your DAW and OBS and this is all you need. Then this is the easiest way to do it. Just create a media source, put a silent file in there and, uh, you know, add the plugin to the silent uh, file as a filter. All right. So yeah, that's it. Uh, hopefully that makes sense. And if you have any questions, let me know. Thanks guys. See ya.